Hey guys, Tony here. Welcome back. It is time for an update for my swing traders on GameStop. Let's talk about what the heck is going on with GameStop. It's been a while since I have done one of these videos because as we can see from the chart here, the stock has been basically trading sideways for three or four months. Nothing too much exciting going on, but I think we are reaching a critical point where it is going to be more important to keep track of more on a weekly basis what is going on with swing trading opportunities for GameStop. Now, there are some people out there in YouTube and social media land who lie to you. They say they have a lot of integrity, but they lie to you and tell you that I hate GameStop. They lie to you and tell you I have a $7 price target for GameStop or a $10 price target for GameStop. I have never published a price target for GameStop. I talk about the fundamental value of GameStop and how I'm looking at the chart to get the best entry. I don't have a price target for GameStop. I only look for good entries and good exits. You can see all of my purchases up here on the screen in purple and all of my sells in orange. If I had a seven or $10 price target for GameStop, I would not be buying GameStop at all of these prices. These prices were good entries and I sold a couple days or a couple weeks later when a good exit presented itself. So it is a lie and a lack of integrity to say that I hate GameStop or I have some low price target. I have a lot of faith in Ryan Cohen and he's been raising a lot of money to save the company. It is up to us to decide what is a good entry for ourselves, depending on your trading style. Ryan's been doing a lot of cash raising and the bankruptcy thesis is dead with GameStop. So now we wait and see what are they going to do with that money? As a swing trader, I am just looking for the best entry possible for swing trade opportunities. And I come on video from time to time to share my thoughts with you. And there are a couple of overlays that I am looking at as a trader as I'm doing my analysis on GameStop. We got the broader market overlay. We got the fundamentals of the company. We'll talk about that in the next video. And then we have the chart. Just looking at the chart for me is not enough. You got to understand at least at a minimum the overlay of the fundamental value of the company and what kind of news is coming out of the company. And honestly, right now to break out of this pattern to the upside, the very best thing that could happen to GameStop would be some news from management. But until we have that news from management or maybe Roaring Kitty decides to come back again for a quick pop in and hello, until we have one of those, I think that there is a very predictable trend that we can expect on GameStop. We're gonna talk about that in this video and how I'm trading it. Let's get right into it. There are several things that I'm looking at on the chart for GameStop. And if you've been following my channel for a while, you know that we talk about the supply zone there in the red box and the demand zone down in the green. And that I like to do my purchases in a demand zone if I'm lucky enough to get it. And whether we look at the weekly or the daily or the four hour, we're going to be looking at these longer trends because I'm not trying to day trade it. I'm looking for more swing trade patterns. When we look at these, we see several things in common, and that is the 200 moving average in purple is flattening out, and that the 50-day moving average is approaching the 200 and in danger of crossing it over the next several weeks. Now, I've chosen in these charts to show the 250 EMA, the exponential moving average, instead of the simple. That is just a TA choice. You can do whichever one you want and they're going to give you slightly different results. But the reason that I'm using the EMA is I want to focus more on the current price action going on with GameStop because of all that volatility that happened back in May. I want to smooth that out a little bit. I want to have my results weighted a little bit more on the current data. As we're looking at the daily chart here, you can see the 200 EMA in purple is starting to flatten out and the candles are all above it, which is still bullish, right? We want to see the candles and the trading happen above the 200 EMA or the 200 SMA, but the trend is for those candles to move down closer to that 200 EMA. And you can also see that by looking at the 50 EMA, this golden line here, and it is driving down towards 
at 200 EMA. And that is something that for myself, I'm thinking over the next couple of weeks, I want to keep a close eye on that. Is the 50 EMA driving closer or at risk of going under the 200 EMA? Or is the stock able to stay above that and maybe rally? I can't tell you for sure what's gonna happen. This chart is so indecisive, but that is one thing that I'm going to be watching for. Similar situation on the four hour chart, but the gap between the 50 and the 200 is even tighter. So I'm gonna be watching for this interaction between the 50 and the 200 on multiple time frames, the four hour, the daily and the weekly. The short interest on GameStop is under 9%. The cost to borrow is under 1%. So under no circumstance could I tell you this is a short squeeze play. In addition, management has done three dilution events since May, and I have no reason to expect that they won't do more of them if the price pushes up. I think the shorts are taking a break right now. They're waiting to see what Ryan Cohen is going to do with that $4.6 billion in cash. But since they are sitting on the sidelines, if the price drives up due to social sentiment or news, they're going to be sitting there waiting to short and push it back down, depending on what that news is. The other thing that I keep in mind as a rational and emotion-free trader is what is the true fundamental value of GameStop. And there are a lot of people improperly explaining this to you guys, focusing on ratios or things like book value, which have no relation to the share price or the valuation of the share price. Watch any of my videos or maybe watch the next one where we go through a proper valuation analysis of GameStop. Not to tell you that that is a price target. Clearly, the price is hovering in this range right now, but it is kind of an anchor down there well below the current price. And it does give the short some incentive to try and push the price or at least keep it suppressed at this level. They know very well how to do a proper fundamental analysis of the stock price. So despite what you hear out there on social media, they might want to continue to push this price down. And I think that is why we see this general trend down on the stock. And that is actually exciting to me because if I can get a buy in the green demand zone there between say 1875 and 1950, I'd be more comfortable with that. That fits my risk profile. If I'm going to be speculating on GameStop, I want the most risk-free entry possible. So to wrap up this video and my trading plan, you can see that I sold on 924. I don't own any GameStop right now, but I am going to be patient and wait and see if it retests that green demand zone down there between 1875 and say 1975. If it does retest that zone, I will likely buy some GameStop in that zone and hope that it bounces up out of that zone. If it breaks down under that, then I might need to reassess my plan, dump my shares, wait for it to come down. I don't know. We'll address that if we get to that point. If we get to the point where it breaks down under the green demand zone. If things remain kind of in limbo and we're just stuck in between these zones and the stock is trading flat, I probably will sit out and wait till some decisive move happens to the up or downside. I'm never afraid to jump in if there is some bullish momentum in the stock due to social sentiment, people watching the options flow, Roaring Kitty were to come back, or if GameStop were to announce some unexpected news. If we have momentum in the stock, you can expect that I will be jumping in and playing that momentum. You can also expect that whatever is driving that momentum, if it shows up, that I will be carefully analyzing to see if it in any way affected the underlying fundamental value of GameStop. Because that secondary analysis will help me decide at what point do I sell as it is moving up to capture my profits, if that is the move that I decide to take. It is absolutely critical for you guys to understand the true fundamental value of GameStop based on the current information we have. And if some news comes out that changes that fundamental value, then we can change our thesis or how we're trading the stock. But right now, you need to understand the proper fundamental analysis of GameStop so that you don't overpay for the stock when it could be in limbo for weeks, months, or a year, depending on when management finally does something with the cash balance sheet. The cash on the balance sheet is not driving the price of the stock right now. It is potential, it's potential for the company to use. It is not really adding 
anything to the current price of the stock. We'll talk about that in the next video where I break down the true fundamental analysis of GameStop, including my expectations for GameStop's income, both from revenue and interest income. I'll break that down for you through the remainder of the year and tell you what my expectations for GameStop's total end of year net income and the earnings per share that are derived from that. Maybe that is of interest to you to separate away from the cult-like thinking and understand what is the proper fundamental analysis of this so I can trade it properly right now. And if news comes out, then I can readjust my price targets or my trading strategy based on whatever that news is. We will get into that in the next video. I hope to see you there. Let me know what you are thinking as far as trading with GameStop right now, what you are seeing on the chart. I am Tony DeNaro. Thank you for watching and I will see you on the next video.